All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going? Team here, and this is BXJS Livestream. And today, we are going to be revisiting our web components web app that was uh, not really web components. So, this stream basically comes out because some of you uh, were like, hey, you did this stencil stream, and it was supposed to be web components, but it would actually wasn't web components or wasn't purely web components because you used the framework that did a lot of stuff for you, which technically is correct, right? So I, I thought, you know, fine, let's address it. I am actually curious myself as to how good the modern vanilla JavaScript experience is. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to build the exact same app we did last time using stencil. But we are going to build it without any frameworks and without any bundlers. So it's going to be pure vanilla JavaScript, no bundlers, no frameworks, no special dev tools. I hope like there's a few caveats that I have to address during the stream. I think I know how to resolve them, but we're going to see how that goes. But basically the gist is we're going to build the same node management web app uh, with pure JavaScript without any bundling, tooling, whatever. We might add bundling at the end to optimize it, but we're going to see how that goes basically. So that's the idea of it. We are going to use the same repo, but we're just going to uh, change the branch and then I'm going to change the master branch to address both of them and read me. And that's basically the plan. Uh, hey, Gregor, welcome to the stream. All right. So as I've said, we're going to work on the same repo. So I'm going to go ahead and um, create a branch called stencil, right? And that is going to be push minus u origin stencil. So this is going to be our branch with the old code we had. So it's just, you know, so so that we can use the master branch to actually address it. And then we're gonna get checkout minus b, let's call it vanilla. And uh, that is going to be our current branch where we're going to work on whatever we're doing right now. Okay, I should probably dog that stuff correctly. There we go. That looks good. Uh, hey, this is Obi. Welcome to the stream. All right. And uh, because we're doing vanilla, we're actually not going to be needing a whole ton of the stuff we have here right now, which means we can start removing things. Okay, first of all, these folders we don't need TS config, we don't need uh, yes, remove it. Stencil, we don't need. Okay, let me think uh, package. Okay, I'm gonna kill package log. Um, there is also npm version seven released, right? So we want to try give it a shot basically and figure out uh, how better or worse is it than uh, what do you call it uh, than yarn uh, in under the current version? Okay, so uh, license, it's okay. Package JSON is fine. We do have to edit this whole thing. So we do need we do need graffiti here because we do need the backend. We do need Mongo, but we don't need any of that. And I'm gonna leave the start script because we are gonna need some sort of a dev server here. So we're gonna just leave it empty for now. Uh, and this is gonna be vanilla JS vanilla JS uh, app components app. Right, uh, we don't need stencil, we don't need types. So I assume dev dependencies. Well, again, I said maybe we'll add the um, the bundling at the very ends, and we don't need GraphQL and GraphQL requests. So we are going to be using them from the ES modules. I hope using the CDN. So I think there was a CDN that basically converted existing NPM packages to ES modules when they are not. So we're just going to go with that. Uh, just finished the C class. It's a little bit painful. JS preferred. C can definitely be quite painful. I mean, there's a reason why people prefer Rust or Swift or whatever else over it. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's not not exactly a modern language. Let's put it this way. Although it still has quite a lot of users, right? Okay, so uh, let's see. So the schema and graffiti stays because this is our backend essentially, right? So editor, con I think I don't need editor config. I'm just gonna kill it because whatever. Just make it as small as possible. Uh, graffiti config stays. Right, uh, read me, that is fine. We're gonna edit this later. And I guess I'm gonna rename this to old source, right? And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create the index HTML. And I probably should, oh yeah, there is an index HTML. Okay, cool. So we can actually just uh, 
can probably just copy that from here, right? So this is gonna be good. Yes, replace it. Yes, replace, there we go. Okay, so this is our entry point. Essentially, we're just gonna be using the root folder as the app entry point. I'm gonna serving some kind of server that does it. And we're gonna be using this type module. So we're not gonna do the no module thing at all, basically. So this is gonna be just purely, um, Purely targeting the latest uh, stuff. Um, okay, I guess let's create the source folder here. And assets, so this is fav, fav icon, whatever. I'm just gonna use those. I think it's a stencil stuff, but that's fine. We can, we can, we can go with that. It's not a big deal. And manifest goes into source. Uh, so index.html should reference. So we're gonna have source app. Let's just go with app.js. We're not gonna use no module, as I said. We're gonna have source app CSS if we need it. I'm not sure if we do. So it's gonna be source assets, source manifest, that looks fine. Content IE edge, uh, yes, that is fine. Okay, so this is, yeah, so we need to change some, some description later, but it's just gonna leave it at to do. And this is uh, vanilla JS node management app, right? Okay, so this looks like a nice starting point. I guess we are gonna be, since we're gonna be using web components, we're gonna create our own app root component because why not? And that also means that we need our app.js entry point, right? So, um, okay, so this is, I guess, right, first things first. So we need to serve it with something and then let's add some, uh, so let's say there's a div here that says hello world so that we can actually serve it and see that it works, right? And I also need to create app.css. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, what do we use to serve it? So last time we used, what was it? NPX HTTP server, right? So let's use that. It seems like, uh, right. Uh, okay, so let me think. MP uh, so f first thing first, I really want to try that. So we're going to go time yarn. And I just want to see the difference between the yarn uh, 1x and then the NPM 7 that just came out. Okay, so that took eight seconds. Okay five seconds and three system time, which is eight seconds total. That's okay. So uh, let's kill the node modules and try it again with npm install. This is npm seven and I probably don't have cache. So we are gonna, you know, we're gonna run it a couple of times to actually get the stuff cached and see how much time it takes. Nine seconds without cache. And I assume it's gonna be a lot faster if we have it with cache. Uh, hey, my love, welcome to the stream. Uh, hey, Ermic, welcome to the stream. What is the advantage of web components? Well, it's a part of the platform, so they are only gonna become better over time, essentially. Same as what is the, like, like it's like asking what is the advantage of HTML, you know? So, okay, um, so NPM install with cache takes two times less than yarn. That is damn impressive. Okay, um, I guess we're not using yarn anymore. Like, this is really awesome, okay. I am uh, extremely impressed. Uh, so, okay, let me kill the package lock again and we are gonna, yes, npm install just to regenerate the lock file because I know that it uses the um, yarn lock if it's there. Hey, Johnny Mnemonic, welcome to the stream. All right, uh, so we got that. We got the new package lock all nicely shaped. Uh, and we needed to install, uh, what was it? npm install save dev and the HTTP server, right. So this is our, uh, that is fast. Holy shit, okay. HTTP server is gonna be our thing. And I believe they actually changed how NPX works. So you can, uh, no, what was it? NPM exec, I think, right? So you can now do NPM exec packages. Uh, I haven't read the docs now, so I apologize in advance for just trying things randomly. <laughs> HTTP server, I think that should work, right? Yeah, there we go. So, okay, anyway, npm start is what we want to do, npm start, so that should start our server on port 8080. Uh, by using vanilla JavaScript and not using any um, bundlers or anything like that, we're obviously losing the functionality of hot reload, which means we're going to have to F5 things ourselves, right? Uh, hey, Sebastian, welcome to the stream. Hey, CM, welcome, welcome, guys. Uh, all right, so we did the basic setup, it works. 
The cool thing is we don't actually have to touch this anymore at all because now all we have to do is just edit our files, go back to browser, hit refresh, and then there you go, right? So that's, that's done. Now, what we need to do is, um, so webcomponents.org is the official website. And there was a fr like a library that allowed you to build web components in a nice way. I think it was lit, lit something, lit HTML, was it? Okay, so it's part of Polymer project. So let's go have a look at them because I basically I want to use helper when developing uh, web components because I know that you know if you do it from scratch it's what is going on uh, if you're developing web components from scratch it's a bit annoying right so like the the native API are not exactly super nice but when you use something like lead, lead HTML lead element or whatever makes it a lot nicer essentially okay so uh Right, right, right. So lit elements uh, basically looks like the class components for React and lit HTML is, this is a tagged. Okay, so I guess this is like a lot, basically templating library, right? Um, <laughs> that actually looks very nice. The only question is, is it automatically? No, it's basically you have to, uh, right. So it's like kind of a functional-ish approach to it. I guess we need lit element unless there is something else. Wait a second. So lit element alternatives, right? So let's have a look. Again, I'm you know I'm quite um, quite far away from the web components area, so I don't know all the tooling that is there. So basically, if you are working with web components and know any good libraries, do feel free to throw them into the chat. I would be more than happy to pick up basically whatever is popular right now. But there is, okay, partial library, base class for components, blah, 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 fit HTML, lit HTML web components and Redux. That is one combination, okay. Uh, ULLR web components functional programming using lit, okay, that, that, that sounds actually very nice. And it is, okay, it's not exactly actively maintained, so I don't know if we want that. Uh, okay, okay. You know what? Let's just go with um, lit element, right? Because why not? Yeah, I mean, stencil, we did the last stream, right? So it's like it's not really self contained web components rather than a framework that gives you all in one. So this is why we're doing this separate stream, which aims to explore how you can do it without using a framework. Um, Vanilla JS and reactive web components. Do you know Preact? Yeah, Preact is really nice, but it's not really web components, right? So it's like, it's just a framework like React or whatever else. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's go with lit elements. Uh, now, the thing is that we want to import this from Content Delivery Network. And I mean, okay, so there's two ways. Way number one, we can use something like GSPM, which is the Content Delivery Network, where you can just import the module from your own module and it will work as expected, I hope at least. Second option is to use um, ES modules bundler like Snowpack that allows you to do that locally, which, I, I, okay, you know what? We're, I said we're not gonna touch bundler, so we're not. I'm basically gonna do this thing with, um, or at least I'm gonna try to do that with, uh, all right, of course. Uh, so let me, I guess, copy the whole thing. So we're gonna do this and I am gonna use the GSPM. So the format is this. So you just put gspm.dev before it and that should work. Okay, if that works, that's gonna be really awesome. Uh, so what is a uh, decorator? Oh, it uses decorators that are experimental. Uh, how does it work without decorators? Can you actually use it? Wait, 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 wait. TypeScript, code editor, JavaScript. Try lit element in live. Okay, wait a second. So how do I use it if I am targeting the current browsers? Is there a way to do that? Uh, define elements, right? Yeah, okay, so you can. Okay, so I guess we can use this syntax, right? So this is our, right? So this is our simple gridging, my elements, right? And then we don't need to export anything. We just say, um, okay, it's gonna be app. What, what, what was the name of it? App root. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's go with that. App root extends lit element, right? I th do we need decorators for properties? I don't think that's even required, right? So custom elements. Where is this coming from? That is 
Is that just custom? Um, wait a second. Does it have custom elements? Oh, right. I want get okay. This another downside of working this way is that we are not actually gonna get uh, any dev experience this way, right? Because yeah, okay. So you have to like dive into the library itself and see the um, whatever it exports. So what is a custom element? I guess it is the custom elements that was there right defined so this is probably what you need to do and then it's going to be app roots right so this you lose quite a bit in in uh dev experience if you work this way uh the question is will this actually work uh blocked by client all right uh my my right this thing so i probably should just disable it there we go okay reference my element is not defined uh right okay that should be app roots that is absolutely right Custom element define is not a function. Uh, right, so this is not the right thing. Uh, not working hot reload makes me think how it actually works under the hood. Uh, but I mean, um, the hot you cannot hot reload, right? So it's just you have to serve. I guess I don't know if the uh, this HTTP server that we use um, actually has the hot reload capabilities because hot reload on its own is a very simple thing at the, you know, the stupidest thing, you just refresh everything. And then the smart hot reload is basically reloading things in chunks. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Let me see. Silent course, log SSL, blah, blah, blah. No, it doesn't seem like it can refresh anything, but that's fine. Um, what is the bxjs no it is not one c product it is building x with js is just abbreviation because it's shorter <laughs> but yeah it's just the name of the whole channel series stream whatever i do basically hey nitsan welcome to the stream all right anyway coming back to our so custom elephant define is not custom elephant that is not a thing custom elements define is not a thing uh, but we probably can get the API here, right? So this is custom elements. Oh, I guess that's a native API, right? So it's actually not from the library, but rather the actual custom elements. Yep, there we go. Okay, cool. So that works. And hello world actually functions as expected. That is uh, kind of great. So we literally just defined our first custom element. And it's, uh, I mean, it's not, okay. You know, it's not super hard but um it's a component so let me just move it into the app uh, we're gonna have components app that is gonna be index.js i guess there is no reason to nest it that much just move it to components kill the app and then rename this to the app.js i think that will be sufficient just copy this whole thing and then we can do export class i don't know if we need to like we don't really need to export that right so it's yeah, that's fine. We don't actually want to do that. It doesn't matter. So with this, this one is fine. What we need to do here instead is just import um, components app. I think that should basically work fine. No, it is not source components app. Oh, right. Because it's ESM, you actually have to specify the uh, endings. Uh, hi, Marina. Welcome to the stream. All right. So we did that. Now we can actually start working on... Uh, on uh, routing, I guess, because Stencil handily provided router for us, but this time around we actually don't have it, right? So we will have to bootstrap it ourselves. I guess I can also copy the CSS since we had some stuff here. We can kill that. We don't need this anymore. Uh, AppTS. Right, so this is the Polymer web components we used, and I believe we can use them in the same way with exception that we actually have to import them from JSPM. I think that should work. We're gonna try that out. Uh, okay, I'm gonna kill this global thing because we don't need it anymore. So yeah, this one is fine. We basically done that. But yeah, I mean, the, the amount of stuff you lose in terms of development experience when you switch to this way of writing apps is quite significant, to be honest. Okay, so yeah, so let's start with so last time we had this home page and we had the notes page and okay, the app route is something we created. I guess we can just do this, copy it uh, from here to here. So we have this app thing. Uh, we don't really care about that stuff. 
Okay, so this this is perfectly fine, right? So this is save that. Format this a bit nicer. Um I wish, I wonder if there's a plugin for lit HTML. There's gotta be a plugin for that, right? There we go. Okay, uh I guess that should do it. And it doesn't even need reloads. Nice, there we go. So we got our highlighting. So yeah, okay, so router is something we have to change, obviously, because this won't work. But uh, in theory, if I refresh this now, no errors. Uh, well, no, okay, there is errors. Server responded with non JavaScript mom type of text HTML. Uh, so what is, where, where, what? That is a whole ton of modules, by the way. Okay, so uh, what is exactly, what is complaint? GSPM dev polymer polymer. Okay, so it doesn't like the polymer imports. I guess, right, for now I'm just gonna comment them out because it uh, doesn't like them, but uh, there we go, it actually works. Obviously it doesn't look as nice as our previous app, but we're gonna get to that. So now we need to figure out routing. There we go, this is one of the top searches here. Lit Redux router, Polymer UI router. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's use Polymer, right? Because we already used that. So we can just go with this. Um, okay, so uh, demo page, right. I remember that they, <sighs> why do you have to be like this Polymer? I remember that they had the Polymer um, documentation on the official website, right? But not here, Polymer, was it library or something? Uh, Polymer library 3.0, oh, I guess, router, please. Um, right, no, not here. Okay, so what is that Polymer UI router? That like actual Polymer thing or is it a separate thing? UI router, get, okay, there we go. UI router, no, that's the, I guess what's it based on? uh for general right oh is it is it a wrapper around it i guess it is how the <laughs> okay um poly wait a second polymer ui router docs i just gotta google that because they don't give any damn links to that uh so we got there we go routing with app routes you're viewing the older version yes please give me the latest one where's the routing bit Data system, tools, build apps, references. Come on. Shadow, no, that's fine. Um, oh, they actually have their own polymer element. So they wrap around the uh, lit element, I guess. It's like a higher level thing. Maybe we should use that actually. So that looks a lot nicer. Okay, yeah, yeah you know what? Let's, let's go for polymer all in because why not? Uh, since we're gonna be using polymer elements anyway, right? So instead of lit element, we're gonna be extending polymer element and we no longer need that. Okay, we do need the JSPM prefix. I hope this will work as expected, but uh, let's try it. Are you gonna work? Uh, no, question mark, no, yes, what? Preview, okay. Uh, yes, cat, why are you screaming? What's going on? My cat is not happy with something, I'm not sure what. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's actually working. So why is it not? Is this is a file? Yeah, so it did load the file, right? So the problem is, is there a Polymer? Oh, wait a second, Polymer ES module CDN. Is that a thing? Because like Polymer is built around ES modules anyway, because it's a web component thing, right? So it should be available in the web component. Whoa, that is not what I wanted. Uh, yes, six and modules. Yes, please. Uh, blah, blah, blah. How can I? Polymer, polymer is there. Um, what we can try is on PKG, right? So we can die this and then go polymer, polymer. Right, so this should be, yep, polymer element. And if we try this, because I know that on PKG basically allows you to use the yes modules if there are any, I think we should be able to just do that. Would you work? Is it working better than GSPM? No, it actually doesn't. Interesting. So Polymer exports are not actually working. I'm not blocking anything, am I? No, that looks fine, right? Oh, as my log is persisted for whatever reason. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't need to preserve log. Just give me whatever you load right now. Where is my errors? 
Am I am I just missing something in my code? Wait a second. So we got this polymer thing. We got import, yeah, polymer elements. So we are importing the correct thing. Okay, cool. And then we do extends. Oh, right, because I'm an idiot, of course, because it uses completely different structure rather than what we what the lit element does. Okay, of course, that makes perfect sense because, you know, I probably should have read the documentation more careful. Okay, so this is our um, stuff. We do not care about properties right now. We do not care about constructor. We do not care about the greet me function. Okay, so there we go. I think that it should start working and probably the JSPM actually worked as well. But you know what, since we're using the ES module packages, we don't really need the ESPM, which converts the non ES module to ES module yet at least. So I'm just gonna go with that. Okay, um, we don't need that. Right, uh, so we did this uh, routing is what I, I went looking for routing and then started rewriting the thing. Um, Custom elements, upgrade guide. So this is Polymer library. So where are the components? Polymer UI router. Yes, yes, okay. Oh, is it like a third party thing? Seems like it is indeed. So how do I use it? Using minimal bits from Polymer 3x base element. Okay, so this is a third party package and doesn't seem like it has any documentation for it. So, okay, uh, what else? Do we have any other routing here? Okay, well, I don't, definitely don't want a Redux router. This sounds like too much. Is there like some, really, there's no like very simple basic router? Oh yes, there is the up route. That's what they were talking about, right? Uh, articles routing, there we go. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what we want. So, okay, routes, pattern, tabs, tab name, data, da, 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 up routes. Um, so how do I, where is? Oh God, why is it so hard to find their docs? Okay, uh, Polymer up route docs. Okay, we no longer need lit element because we're not using it. I'm gonna keep that one open. Uh, routing with up route, this is the one. No, okay, there we go. So it is Polymer elements up route, okay. Uh, let me think. So that's going to be on pkg.com slash polymer elements up route. I assume cannot find polymer elements latest. Okay. Oh, it's a Bauer. Pa Why is it a Bauer package? That can be right. Tim, why don't you go back old school and not make use of routing and use two pages and put it in a static website? Uh, I mean, that would mean like we could do that. The problem is that would mean that we had we need server to handle that uh, the routing part is and we need something to handle the routing, right? So you because we have this dynamic part of the route, there has to be something that will handle it anyway. And since we're doing the front end, I would just stick to the front end routing. But I mean, that's not a terrible idea. You could do that, but uh, personally, but that would mean in our case, that would mean we have to add the server, right? Because what we have right now is doesn't actually do anything, but provides a GraphQL endpoint. Okay, so this, why is it a Bauer package? <laughs> because it's okay, Polymer 3. Um, how is there no routing here? Data, polyfills, tools, build apps, app templates. Where is the components documentation for this? Guides, API. Elements. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Finally, legacy. No. Uh... Right. So this doesn't seem like this seems like the core of it. Where the hell is components? Lit element, material, web components? Question words. This is so damn confusing. Like the docs for Polymer are one of the most confusing things I've ever had to work with. It's like all over the damn place. Uh, that doesn't seem correct. Right, so this is definitely not it. Uh, polymer lit element, yes. What's available? Polymer paper button. Okay, so it mentions components here, but there is no freaking list anywhere. Am I just missing something? Release notes, custom elements, concepts. Is there like an obscure link somewhere that just lists all of them? Or did they thought it was enough to just do this? in here, which is like, I guess Polymer up route is the package. Is that what you're telling me? That exists? 
Yes, it does. It cannot find index.js and Polymer are proud. Okay, so if you show me the whole package, no, don't. Why? Where do you want to translate it from? French? That that's not French. Um, GitHub Pages. Yeah, but I mean, GitHub Pages is still like we have to configure it, right? It's, it's still like configuring a backend, and then we have to deploy the GraphQL backend somewhere so that uh, GitHub Pages can access them. That is too much work. Uh, maybe App Nest Web Router. Uh, sure, let me take a look. So we got App Nest Web Router. Um, okay, DuckDuckGo is not working very well with things like this for whatever reason. So let's see. Come on. Load already. What is going on? Uh, I'm sorry, what? There we go. Okay, um, let's open the GitHub right away. So this is routers. Okay, it was renamed. That's fine. Router slots. Add base href, import the router slots, add the router. Okay, that seems pretty straightforward. Let's give it a shot. Router slots, can we import it from on PKG? Here's the question. Yes, we can. That is awesome. Okay, so we can just, uh, so this is our app. We can import, uh, there we go. So we import router slots. Okay, cool. And then we do what? We say that base href is... I guess we can just do this, right? I assume it doesn't have any uh, sort of the requirements like J6 has, for example. Uh, okay, routed components will go here. All right, so this means this is the place we wanna put it on, okay. So far, so good. And, uh, right, so then we have to define this thing. Can you do it? Like I would prefer a declarative approach, but that is fine, I guess. I guess no, so I guess it's like you have to define it via code, which is perfectly fine. Uh, okay, so which means we need to go to Polymer and uh, not this one, where's the Polymer docs? Right, there we go. So we need to, where is get up, right? Yeah, so we need, uh, no, that is not what we need. Try Polymer. Uh, Constructor, so we do not need constructor. We need the life cycle. Where's the life cycle? Data system, observers, events, handle events, custom element concepts. Yes, so we need that. Uh, define an element. Okay, so we got connected ready. Okay, yeah, that seems that seems like a nice callback. We can do it on ready. And uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use this router slot thing, right? So this is our yeah query selector router slot. So we are gonna have, this is gonna be home. Home is gonna be not lazy load. Okay, so it even supports lazy loading. That is pretty cool. Like, okay, so if it would be declarative, that basically would be all I ever wanted, but it's not declarative. Still, it's not super terrible. Um, the same query, await router slots. Okay, da, da, da. Right, so we need, I guess now we need to define, uh, Pass notes. Uh, you know what? Let's just try this. So node component. And then we got home component. So we need to create our home components, home JS. I'm just gonna copy the whole thing. So we are not, I mean, we, I will leave the ready here because we're gonna use it to load some stuff. And then we're gonna export class home components. This is gonna be okay. So we don't need that. We don't need any of that. This is gonna be basically, let's just do this. Home page, just to test that it works essentially, right? Home components, and this is one. So we don't need to import router slot here, okay? And we need the um, node component which is gonna be node component and we're just gonna do this, right? Whoops. Okay, node components, right? So this is getting a bit complex. That's okay. So we are gonna import from, so this is gonna be home and we're gonna import this home component and from, uh, let me think, node, we are gonna import node component, right? And I think, yeah, so we go, there we go. Yeah, 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 we don't need lazy load. That is perfectly okay. Uh, routed component will go here. Question is, will that work? 
uh, route not oh right i keep forgetting that uh, es modules require you to use the extensions this is a mistake i think it will take me quite a long time to actually properly to figure out how to you know teach myself to not repeat that <laughs> Uh, is it easier, faster than the same project with React or Vue or other? Um, no, it's definitely not easier or fast. Like, okay, that depends on what you're doing. It's easier in terms of that you don't have to, you know, set up anything. But then again, frameworks like Create React App or Next.js or um, what is it? Nuxt or whatever. They take care of that setup for you. The advantage is that you don't have any build tool chain and you can literally just edit files, hit F5 and it will work, right? So long as you write it correctly. Uh, can I read property out of now? Okay, so I guess it cannot be a sync is what it's saying. But I guess in our case, it doesn't actually matter. We can just do that, right? So this like, we can just do it synchronously. Can I read property out of now? Oh, 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 okay. So it does not find the router slot thing, okay. Console log router slots. Uh, no, 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 don't exit it. Yeah, okay, so I guess not. Yeah, okay, so it doesn't find that. So I guess the ready is not the correct callback, which probably means we need a different one. Uh, so what is the, why don't they have the life cycle? Define an element. Okay, here's the question. What is the life cycle? Life cycle. It's probably something like render, right? It's like, there's gotta be a thing. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Life cycle, hello? Oh, it literally just searches Google. Uh, yeah, okay, cool, sure. <laughs> Why not? Why even add? Yeah, and the Google shows the results from the old polymer, amazing. That's just, uh, yeah, okay. Um, Component, oh, there we go. It's just a tiny hidden link in the bottom of the documentation. Amazing experience. Okay, so we got the constructor. Okay, this is when element is upgraded. We got the ready polymer specific initialization. We got the connect uh, document level event listeners, locate your element, use annotated event listeners. Uh, right, so I guess connected callback is probably what we want, question mark. I wonder if, if that will actually work. No, we want, okay, so it's still executed before. So we need some way to reference. Uh, so they said you can use the annotated event listeners, whatever that is. And we'll click, okay, so it automatically does those things. Uh, how do you properly do this? Add event listener, click this on click. No, that's not what we want. Listen on, uh... right. So how the hell are they supposed to use that? Like, I guess, oh, right. Okay, so this is what they suggest doing. Okay, that makes, that makes a lot of sense, actually. <laughs> so you, wait a second, would that work? So you define this thing, and then once it's defined, you just do that. Right, is that is this gonna work? Then off undefined. I'm sorry, what now? But I just copied this from the official documentation. Custom, oh, oh, okay. I am an idiot and I copied only parts. Okay, so we can do this. Right, okay. Um, set up routing. That is a bit messy. Again, I would, as I said, I would prefer declarative router rather than Anything else? Uh, what if we do it on app roots? Are you gonna? Nope, out of still undefined. How the hell do you connect that? I mean, <laughs> I don't want to use set timeout because that's obviously wrong. How the okay, is there any other router that actually allows us to do to do it in a declarative manner? There's a web router. Okay, what is this? Are you declarative? Uh, that is exactly what we're using. Okay, not that. Uh, Vadin router. Okay, so Vadin is a pretty large framework, but they also do it imperatively. God damn it. <laughs> X router. Uh, yeah, this looks nice. The question is, does it actually work? How well it's maintained? So judging by everything, not that much. Express, that is definitely not a router. App routes. Um, so this also seems to be declarative, but 
Polymer app route. Okay, so I I did when I tried to import it from NPKG, it said that it's not found, right? Yeah, so index.js is not found, but I guess you can get the other things. Uh, so what is exactly, wait a second, so I can kill that, I can kill that. So they are importing, okay. So we need to import those things. Let's try this router because like, yeah, so this is, this is one of the problems with using an ecosystem that is not exactly large is that it's gonna take you a long time to find the libraries that essentially work as well as you want and do things that you want them to do, right? Polymer, uh, okay, now this is Polymer. This is not what we want. Uh, I don't know why we need this DOM bind. We probably don't. Okay, so this is what we wanna do essentially, right? Okay, we got application, app route. So this should open, oh, sorry, the import the components for routing, which means that now we can just, uh, where were they? We can just do that. Okay, let's try this. So we no longer need that, which is great. I like this approach, which means we can just do this. So application routes, routes. Okay, so this is this, and this is gonna be notes. And how the hell do I, what is this route and subroute? How do I route to something that exists basically? How does it work? Um, documentation, yes, is that? <sighs> Why do you have to be like this? Oh no. Okay, maybe this has a better explanation of what's going on. App route, route, pattern, data. Okay, uh, paver, tab, select, data, tab name. Okay, so this is like the tab selection. Uh, right, I guess, no, this is not block. Why is it not loading stuff? Why is ad block blocking web components? What is going on with my browser? Is it just doesn't exist? View frame source. That seems like it should work, right? Polymer properties route value return path pref. So it seems like you still have to do it yourself. Uh, why doesn't loads? Oh, this is so so annoying. Like this is just. So if I remove this view source and we just load this thing, are you actually gonna work? Is it just broken? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, cool. Great experience. Oh my God, do I have to write like, <laughs> okay, you know what we could do? Like, since we are gonna be using imperative routing anyway, it seems. So JS routing. I know that there's a bunch of like existing routing libraries, right? And we can probably just take some existing vanilla router, like JavaScript one. And uh, yeah, there you go. So we can just do that. Right, okay, so this is not gonna work. We can just throw it in here. This is not gonna work. Right, um, okay, yeah, cool. HTTPS, Navigo 6. Uh, that's why I stuck with Stencil. I got frustrated with Polymer. Yeah, that's totally understandable. Like, you know, if, again, I'm doing this purely to see what the experience would be, but I would, like, if I would be building a real app, I would drop this already, like, 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Um, okay, let's see if we can actually just, you know, go and um, do something. Uh, okay, so we do this, we add this, we init we need to initialize it. I guess we can just do it in place, right? So we got this, let roots, use hash, uh, and yes, defaults to false, that is fine. Okay, so we just need to give it a root, which means we can just do this, right? So I actually probably a good idea to just initialize it here and uh, just do export const router navigo. And I guess we can import navigo from navigo. I assume at least it's gonna give us the that an AS module that doesn't actually, can I do module? Yes, I can, okay, cool. So I can actually do that. Okay, so we can, uh, we can, I mean, that's, that's yeah, please just, just a bit simpler, there we go. Okay, so we created the router. That's fine. Uh, now, how do I? 
display all products resolve on product set okay so this is how it works and i guess we need to import it yeah so i guess it makes sense to just do it in place we don't need to export it anywhere so how would we go about that um so I guess in this case, we need some local state for the component. And basically the, our app root component is what will handle the routing, right? Or I guess um, response to routing is a better way of putting it. Um, okay, so essentially this is, where's our, okay, we don't need that anymore. We do need, um, where is, yeah, I guess ready is fine. So basically whenever it is ready, Super ready is what we want to say first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say that it should listen to this router, right? Uh, that is a bit broken. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to have two pages. We're going to have the, uh, this one and we're going to have the, I guess, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So we already have the home at very bottom it means that it's going to be notes. And then we're going to do this and then we need to define this set content function which uh, is something that polymer, okay, so do they have local state? How do you life cycle initialization there? Okay, state, how do I uh, so life cycle callbacks, custom element concepts, define declare properties? I assume properties is more like the, like literally properties, right? So where is, Custom element co uh, concepts, yes. Yeah. So okay, this is not it. Define an element state. Return get properties constructor. So is there is there a way to do it dynamically? I could just say that hey, shadow DOM and styling events data system. There you go. Okay, so it's a separate. Okay, so we can say that this, I guess this route, right? So uh, okay, so we need constructor. This is. <laughs> Not exactly straightforward, right? So super, this route is home, okay? And then we just say this route equals home and then this should be the arrow function, right? Um, this route equals notes, okay? And then what we can do here is go main and then just this route, right? I think that's how you do it. Uh, it's for whatever reason, double square brackets. Okay. Are you, is that, are we working? No, we are not working. What am I missing? I th thought that should display this, right? So we got the extends polymer element. Are we extending polymer? Yes, we are extending polymer element. We got the constructor, we set this name, get template, return HTML. What if I do div here? Is that because I don't have the main component? No. Uh, okay, what if we don't set anything here? Why is it not rendering it? Did they change the syntax again and the docs are outdated? Is that what's happening again? Is this gonna work? Wait a second. No, okay, this doesn't work for sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, when you're building an app like this, you don't have server rendering. Uh, would this hurt the SEO ranking? So, uh, I mean, most of the search engines run JavaScript now, but it does hurt the ranking, absolutely. So they only run uh, JavaScript on subsequent scrapes and they also rank the dynamic content lower than the static content. So you do want to have server-side rendering even for the uh, web components, like even for the, you know, the uh, ES modules, web components, whatever, but it's quite easy to set up nowadays with the modern tooling. So this is version three. So why the hell is it not rendering? I am, oh, it's, I shouldn't be this. Okay, so it's just route. This is what's wrong. There we go. Okay, cool. Now we need to render. Um, so now we need to figure out how to render stuff based on the input, right? So uh, na, 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 name. Okay, so in some cases it uses curly braces, in some cases square braces. 
very consistent. Um, batch property changes, conditional. Okay, where's the rendering? Conditional rendering templates, custom elements, DOM templating. There we go. Uh, conditional rendering, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I mean, it is, right. What am I, I'm overthinking it. It is just um, template literal, right? So we can literally just do that. So if this route equals home, then we do one thing. Okay, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna do that, right? And then here we're just gonna have sub route variable, right? I guess let would be easier. And then switch this route case home sub route equals um, home component is what we wanna do, right? Break. I guess I should have done this like this. And then case um, note, we are gonna say that sub route equals note component, right? This is what we called it, I think. And that's basically it. That's our routing. It's very stupid, but I think it should work, uh, okay. Non-template value passed to polymers. Oh, right, I probably should do that as well, right? So this is, so it should be templated as HTML2. Uh, what did I screw up? That is way too many. Okay, uh, kinda getting there, I guess. Homepage, notes page. Okay, note component, home component. So, oh, we don't import them anywhere, I think, right? Yeah, okay, so this is the problem. Import home JS, I import note JS, there we go. Hey, it actually works. Okay, it looks absolutely ugly, but it does work. Right, uh, now we need to actually, um, let me think. So first of all, let's uh, make this a bit smaller, I guess. There we go, a bit nicer. And then this one can be like H3 or whatever on page. And then we can do a href note, right? Um, one to three, note one to three. I, yeah, I think, so basically we are like 90% there in terms of rebuilding because we got the Routing seems to be the most complicated part here. Okay, so we got this and uh, right, 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 right. This is another problem because we're literally navigating. So I guess it has to be the hash, right? And uh, in this case, so wait a second. So which means we need the router to be the now, uh, what was the definition for it? So we need it uh, null and then use hash true and then the hash is the hash, right? Okay. Um, da -da 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 -da, let me think. Yeah, so I think that should make it work. And then we got this hash navigation. So we can log here actually. First of all, where's my route definitions? They are Okay, how do you do the, okay, so I can just do this, right? Notes ID, which means that the, I, how can I get this ID? Uh, per, oh, okay, so it's a params and then, which means that this would be ID. Route note ID, okay. Um, console log notes, uh, just to test that it actually works, whoops. And then this is, home okay i think that should work right note one two three yep perfect and then there's our home um for whatever reason it actually doesn't trigger re-renders uh question is so i guess there's some dom templating inherited template how do i react to data changes so there is there was the data data system right Observe, yeah, blah, 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 that's no, whoa, 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 observers and computed properties. That's what we want. Uh, okay, return, okay, get properties. No, this is a property toggle class. 
complex observers observe changes to my that's property so how do i actually trigger me changes on uh observers callbacks computed properties data bindings da, 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 da. observable changes this owner oh does it have to be like with a curly is that what it says so it's like if it's not no but we're not even using that is that because ugh, wait a second so if i do this and say a route are you gonna start working then notes okay oh no okay now it works but it doesn't re-render the component did i screw up the routing home components node components okay um console log new render is it just me screwing up the this route okay uh hey mihail welcome to the stream all right so what is going on here uh the new re okay so it literally doesn't re-render anything is it not i guess it so it doesn't it does trigger this change in the template but it doesn't trigger the whole function render how the hell does that work okay so i guess right so i guess what's happening is it precompiles this template in some way and then never touches it again which means to make it dynamic we have to add this logic over here somehow Okay, so what is the condition? So I guess it's just the way the polymer works. So how do you conditionally render stuff? Uh, dumb templating. And uh, no, okay. Um, conditional render. A major malfunction, welcome to the stream. Uh, logic in templates, there we go. This is exactly what we want. Uh, similar to conditional, blah, blah, blah. You can do, I mean, this is exactly what we're doing, right? But it doesn't actually change this seems this seems like it's only applies to lit html but not polymer itself because it precompiles stuff okay so this is the dynamic binding this is exactly what we're doing how the hell dom repeat template it dom repeat simple mode blah, blah, blah. filtering and sorting compute filter so you basically need to define a helper function that you can call on the value and it will return. Okay, I see. So I guess let's try that. So it's it's more of a polymer thing rather than the web components or lit HTML even. Um, render Sabra. But we're literally like inventing our module now. Okay, the cool thing is that we actually don't need to new routes uh there's gonna be routes switch routes and we just we can just we don't need this breaks we don't need setting anything we can just return right there we go okay and then this means that here instead of doing this we can just say render sub route i hope that i'm understanding correctly how it works object html template element well kind of but not really so what do we return here so this returns string okay this is a string div employee first name compute fil oh oh so it passes it as a filter oh boy okay um hmm how the hell do we do this correctly it seems like it's a completely separate problem to be honest <laughs> uh all right data bindings item last yeah okay okay we figured that part out array selector this is like they have a lot of like helper components that basically do that for you uh da, 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 da. conditional there we go that's exactly what we want template dom if okay so i guess can we just do it like this wait 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 so if we just do this thing here template if dom if if uh, route equals home, right? Slash template. So this is kind of gonna be our kind of declarative rendering. Because this is actually a lot nicer than what we had before. If that works, that's like very big if right here. So I'm gonna kill that. 
and then uh, put that here and then node component and then this is going to be notes probably should fix the formatting okay i'm just going to render the uh, route here on its own just so we can see what route is this working oh now it is not working so it doesn't render anything at all so how does this where's this template if Mm, do we need this DOM module ID thing? Template script doesn't seem like we need it, right? So it seems like it's an optional thing. So it's like a wrapper if you want to do it. Oh, it's a why do you have to be like this polymer? Oh my god, helper elements. There we go. Okay, uh, please tell me where is template is DOM repeat. Okay. Uh, conditional, conditional Tom, Dom if, okay. Template is Dom if, okay. If condition, um, why is this condition not working? Template is Dom if, Dom if template inside a polymer element or another polymer managed template. Template is Dom if, if condition, that seems correct, right? So I, I think at least unless this condition I wonder if that condition is executed correctly. Okay, so let's see. They have this example with a user. Uh, value ID, dom if user is admin. Okay, uh, that's very straightforward check. But I guess it's just executed as a function, right? Dom if items data. So, okay, so this is repeat template is, yeah, so it seems like we, could, we should be able to just use it like this. But the question is, why doesn't it work? You know, not like my triple equals here. Is that the problem? Right. So this route works as expected. Uh, let's try the different syntax, I guess. So they had this other way of doing it. Dom if template. But we are inside the polymer. So why is, why is polymer trying to hit X on its own legs? No, I, I think it's just the, I'm not even sure what the problem, I, maybe like, I'm 90% sure that like 95% of issues we had could be resolved with a better documentation. The problem is, it's just like, it doesn't clarify why, what is going on basically. So this is a property reaction. Custom this user, yes. And then why is this not? Okay, so here's the question. Can I actually do that? So equals home. Is this gonna work? I assume this is just evaluated in line as a you know your typical. No, it's not. This is the problem. Okay. <laughs> Next question. I guess helper functions is is come come in here, right? Is home route. And this is just basically gonna be return route equals. I cannot believe I need to write a helper function for this. <laughs> is note. Okay, route. Return route equals note. Okay, uh, let's try this. So is home. I think that should work, right? Uh, at least my understanding is that it will use it as a helper function is note. But this is like, why? I mean, I guess, but you still evaluate this function, right? So it doesn't make sense that you want to evaluate the simple if condition. Okay, so this at least evaluates to the right thing. Question is, why is it not? Can you not use it there? Um, I'm so confused right now. So we still import the home, right? So if I just render it here as is, this will work, right? Yes, it will. Okay. And we got the correct true false here. Right, let me just, just to be safe, I'm going to go here and copy this thing and paste it here and see if I screwed anything up. Template is dom if, if whatever looks correct, right? Why are you not working? Is those working correctly as well? Do we, does it not support the... Uh, I mean, okay. 
Are you gonna work like this? Like is this? Is this no, so this doesn't even render if I just give it true. So there is obviously something is wrong with this template is dom if. Question is what? Static get templates, get properties. What is why is it? Most cases you'll for use the first dom if shorthand. I don't understand why it doesn't work. This is confusing as hell. It doesn't even throws any errors. Like there's nothing in the console. Everything is perfectly executed, but it just doesn't do anything. Let's inspect the DOM maybe. I mean, there's our app root, there's our shadow DOM, there's our div, there's DOM if, there's the templates, there's the document fragment that is absolutely empty. Okay. I mean, let's try the full thing maybe. Is that like, okay, so if I use DOM if, where's the, and there's no documentation on how DOM if is, oh, and if you're doing it this way, you have to manually, implicitly set the condition. Oh, oh boy, that is not fun. Um, right. How the hell? I mean, you know what we could do? Okay, you know what? Fine. That's that's perfectly fine. That's that's it's okay. It's okay. I know another way of doing routing. It's a lot more stupid, but you know what? If it works, it's not stupid, right? Routes. Okay, so we're just gonna pass the route to each component. And the component itself is basically gonna decide if it should render or not. Right? Because I literally don't see any other option. You need to import DOM if. Import from where? The documentation doesn't say. Oh, oh, it does say. Okay. Th oh my God, I'm an idiot. Thank you very much. Okay. So this, but why doesn't complain about that? Oh, okay. So we need to import it from Polymer. You are absolutely right. Okay. Was it that easy? Am I just, am I just dumb? Okay. Um, right. Polymer lib elements DOM if. And is the magic happening now? <gasps> yes, it does. Okay, it actually worked. Holy crap. Okay, that was. <laughs> I should wait a second, but it doesn't. Yeah, okay. So it's again, it's like it mentions it in an example, but it doesn't say it anywhere in the beginning that you actually have to import it as a separate package. <laughs> this documentation is just straight up painful. It's just very, very painful to navigate. <laughs> Anyway, we finally defeated it. It actually works. It renders as as it's supposed to. Okay, div. Uh, no, 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 no. That's too much. Ta-da! Okay, cool. That works. Great. Uh, let me open a new tab and start our backend. Finally, uh, GitHub. Yes, we got that. Uh, right. I should probably sudo service docker start docker. Uh, okay, docker remove exited npm uh, run. What was it? Mongo start. I think. There we go. Okay. npm run graffiti start. There we go. There's our graffiti. Okay. So we got the backend now. Okay. We, we got to that point. We got to finish it today. Like that, that's been an extremely painful experience, but you know what? That's fine. We can get through that. Okay. So we got this app road thing. We no longer need that. So we finished all of this. This is good. Um, now we got the home, which so in this case, we had the query and we had this request, right? So, okay, so this is our, this is our GraphQL request. Okay, so we got to unpkg. Here's the question. Will it actually allow us to import that as a module? Um, ta -ta 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 -ta. No, 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 don't. What are you, where are you going? Um, module, is that, uh, I think unpkg people were adding it as a node, uh, uh, okay. Try GSPM. I think they basically automatically convert everything to modules. Uh, I'm sorry, what? GSPM. Oh, it should be gspm.dev slash GraphQL requests. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we can import it from GSPM. Okay, that's good. And then, to do, do. Okay, so this we do that. Which means that we need this. Um, okay, so first of all, instructor super 
this notes equals empty array for now, right? And then we are gonna on ready. Okay, we already have this ready here. So here in the ready, we are gonna load our notes and just assign it to these nodes, right? Which means that we need to do this template. Throw it in here. So this is our notes component actually, but you know what, that's fine. We can just do it in line for now. Uh, and yeah, okay, so this is gonna be right. So we need to rewrite this because we are gonna be templating them. Okay, so we are gonna, yeah, okay. So this is gonna be this dom, blah, blah, whatever it was, dom, what is it, what, dom, dom, uh, dom repeat, right? I assume I also have to, yeah, I have to import it. <laughs> Why is it not the first line? Oh my God, okay, uh, home, right, so polymer. So prefix that with on PKG. Yes, we do that. Okay, so repeating, repeating is that, okay. Right, I don't know if we're gonna do all the components because we already spent way too much time fighting with that. Notes, uh, maybe we just do it in line because why not? I mean, the note item was super straightforward, right? So it's just that basically. Okay. Um, Da -da -da. So this is going to be a href and then it's going to be just note, note ID. And then, yeah, okay, uh, we don't need this, we don't need that. So, yeah, so it's literally just div and an A here. Okay, uh, da -da 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 -da. so index, we don't care about index in this case, give a name item. Okay, so it's going to be item and I guess we can also use the square brackets in here item name okay right uh yeah I think okay so add node is not gonna render for now I don't think we have any nodes so it, does it actually work we're actually sending the uh hello what is going on Oh, there we go. Okay, uh, we send in the request. No, we are not. We are not sending a GraphQL request, right? GraphQL. So we do have GraphQL request here, but we are not sending the request itself. Why are we not sending it? Because request is not defined. How is this even working? There we go. Okay. Why did it not complain? There we go, now we're sending the GraphQL request, but it comes back empty, which makes perfect sense. It actually works, like, okay, now it got easy, like, this is the cool part. Um, okay, so not item, we don't care about that, we are done, basically. Uh, note is our note page, so we are gonna just, uh, okay, I'm gonna do that later, that's fine. Home is, okay, so we did that, we just need to do the add notes thingy. And then we're basically done, right? So this is kind of, okay, and uh, the notes page rendering as well. Okay, so this is the most complex thing. And yeah, this is gonna be a bit tricky to implement. Okay, you know what, it's, it's fine. Uh, so add notes.js. I'm gonna copy the note, I guess, because it's the simplest one. Um, so this is gonna be add note components, add notes, let's just call it add note. Yes, I'm gonna copy the whole thing from here. Okay, so this is our this is our styling for it, right? Uh, we will have to change the templates quite a bit because the old ones stencil, so it's a lot nicer, but that's fine. Okay, this is our logic. Uh, again, again, a lot of that will have to be changed. Uh, we also don't need any of that styling. So yeah, we don't need any types annotations. We don't need this UI thing. Okay, that's fine. I sure as hell hope the event handling is as easy as everything else in, you know, the data bindings basically. Okay, let me think. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, so we got that. Yeah, so we need the query, we need the GraphQL request. So I'm gonna copy the mutation here. 
throw it in here and then I can copy the GQL from here. Okay, uh, so we got that. Right, uh, we need to import. So we did the add node here, which means we gotta import it. Uh, whoops. Okay, uh, right. I Again, I keep forgetting that you have to use the full file name and, and otherwise it's not gonna work. Right, okay, so the template is completely broken right now, which makes perfect sense. Uh, so we are going to edit it, right? Uh, so let me just collapse that. So, right, first of all, we gotta import our components and I guess I'm just gonna import them in place. Save that, add notes, just import it here. So, uh, Polymer, yeah, I guess I'm gonna try to use unpkg first and see if that works. I think it should, right? So it's gonna, yeah. The problem is now we are at 63 requests, holy crap. That is a lot of requests for a very, very simple app. And uh, 400 kilo, like, okay, almost 500 kilobytes of JavaScript. Something broke. Uh, Paper button. Okay, so just loading stuff from on PKG. Come on, hit the cache already. I mean, once you cache it, it's not too bad. Why is it not? Okay, so we are uh, access to script from origin has been blocked like by course policy. Why is it blocked by course policy while everything else works? Uh, okay, let's try GSPM, I guess. Uh, gspm.dev, are you gonna work? And transmit it with, okay, so gspm dev transmits it with the wrong mime type. So why is it, I wonder why is it fails? Why is it? Why is it transmitted with the wrong course headers while transmitting everything else with the correct headers? That is very confusing. But which one actually fails? Okay, it also takes quite a bit. Failed to resolve module specifier polymer legacy. Relative references must start with either slash or dot slash. Okay, so it seems like some of those are a bit broken, I guess. Um, Here's the question, can I just do module? So let's try maybe maybe add, maybe maybe this because of the compiled version so it's just yeah request modules specifically would that help why like when you don't have cache yeah it's i guess jspm doesn't have them cached as well it returns 404 and server responds with index oh is it uh for yeah so let's see failed preview response no this is like literally 404 paper button module okay i guess it just doesn't return module okay so not this paper input i assume is also fine paper but okay so it's only paper button was the problem so let's try that are we working now okay <laughs> It's like trying to figure out which of those components, which are supposed to be web components, is supposed to be like AS module formatted, has AS modules and which not. Okay, uh, are we good yet? No, we are not. Uh, what is this? Polymer lib utils path. Fails to load. Okay. Oh my god, this is painful. Why is this not working? Is it? I mean, a second. So if I just do that. Okay, you know what? Let's just try one by one, right? Okay, so paper input. Are we working now? No, we are not. Okay, so this is broken. Paper input doesn't work. What about paper button? Are you work? No, same issue. What about the um, text area? Iron components. Does iron components work? It's taking a whole lot of time. I like why? I like on PKG is generally pretty damn fast. Okay, seems like uh, this is also okay. So now we got wrong course headers. Uh, yeah. Okay. So what is up with the course headers? Refer origin. miss okay so it missed the cache but why it doesn't 
what is oh oh okay so okay right i guess this is the problem gspm okay let's try gspm does this work yes it does okay so what if we try gspm for this jspm is it's it's good that there is more than one way to basically import stuff but and jspm responded with the wrong mime type uh okay so this is this is what you were saying that this it basically hits the uh, uh javascript oh sorry the uh, html right yeah okay okay why does it import the whole damn thing uh meta name blah 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 polymer title uh okay so how do i is there a way to say that hey like imports oh boy okay you know what um we're just gonna use the basic html components because it seems like the paper components just doesn't really work with modules input type text class name label this on key up uh so this is going to be a handle name change i think that should do it we do not need a reference i don't remember why we had a reference in the first place so it's going to be just a text area on key up is going to be this handle body change that is fine we do not need this and then we're going to have just a simple button and i think i screwed something up there we go on click uh, this create notes I think that should be fine and then button what is this formatting okay let me just uh, do that there we go that's a lot nicer okay so we are not gonna use paper components uh, I mean if I install it with npm then I would have to copy or sim link it or whatever which I don't really want to do like the straightforward way obviously to do that it would be to install a bundler and just you know use it but i want to wait that as much as possible it boggles my mind that you cannot just import them from um what do you call it from uh unpkg because it does correctly handle es modules I, like why it doesn't work i don't know okay uh, let me just wrap those in divs so that they are a bit nicer dev okay dev and that's not my best markup but you know what that's fine okay question is does it actually work uh okay so we are not gonna emit all oh, right this we use this emit thing as well which i guess oh yeah we used it to uh right i remember what we did okay so let me just comment all of this out and just say right now i remember where we had references to those elements okay 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 it's fine we, we can work around that uh, anyway console log creates variables there we go okay and create notes nothing happens okay so i guess the bindings are not exactly don't, don't really work this way okay anyway data binding uh let's have a look at that can i just like assign a property to input or something and will it work like that will be the perfect attribute binding property binding label div button data flow simple view inputs is there an input example somewhere input type number value uh, okay listens for input and sets host value to input value okay so i guess this is what we want right that's actually a lot easier than the um what do you call it so it sets host value to input value okay and we want to set the name okay that is a lot simpler than uh, the stencil i do like that okay and this should be body okay and then how do i handle on click i guess it is just click you can later load it to cron node i mean yeah it's like you have to it's like you basically you are asking me to create the build setup right now by myself which is i mean i you know i could do that but like come on i wanted to evade building that's kind of the point 
Okay, uh, reacting to click elements, events, handle and fire events. There we go. That should have on click. Okay, so it's on minus click. And it's just that. Okay. Four. ASD 103 creates. That works. Cool. That is actually really, really nice. Okay, so we can actually do that. Now the question is. Right, but that means that we can just say that this name and this body equals that, right? So if I if I don't send anything here, just come in this. So theoretically, if I refresh this and if I type, it works. Holy crap. Okay, that is super nice. Right, so now we need to emit events from our add node component so that our parent component can actually listen to it and add the uh, emitted node into the existing list um gesture events handle and fire events okay so how do i fire custom events there we go this dispatch event new custom event okay so it's not much more complex than what we had before new custom events notes and then this is gonna be notes right i is that a detail or Kick edit. Okay, so we can just say notes, right? There we go. Okay. Um, now, how do I listen to that? Out event listener. Can I uh, bubbles composed? Can I listen to it dynamically? There are a declarative way of doing that. Handle retargeted events. Listen on custom elements. This out event listener, um, listen and child elements. All of that is, is like imperative, right? Why is there no declarative way of doing that? Annotated event on minus. Okay, so that should basically work. So if I do on note, it should work, right? As far as I understand, at least. Okay, let's try on note. Handle new note. Okay, so you got that handle new notes, events. Const note is going to be events note. And then we just say this note equals note concats this note, right? So we just basically push it in front. And that's basically it. I think that should work if I understand correctly. Test notes one to three create notes and request is not defined. Okay, so there is oh it removed the request again. Right, okay, please stop removing that. Test notes one to three create notes. Okay, so it did create the notes and I guess it did dispatch the event, but it did not trigger it on notes. So we are dispatching the node event, okay. Um right, so uh why is it not handling it? And we'll click. The event name is always converted to lowercase. My events is case sensitive to avoid confusion. Always use lowercase event names. Okay. So it should work according to this docs. The question is why it doesn't work. Uh, new custom event kick detail. Right, right, right. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess we could try to do that. Why is it handle new notes console log new notes events? Are we actually like, is it, is it not triggered or is something else is happening? So we actually should now see our one note that we created. What is going on with my connection? No, oh, wait, 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 wait a second. Okay. So we do get the notes back. There we go. So we now have one note, but they are not rendered. Right. Okay. Note many. This notes. Okay. So why is this? Did I? I did import DOM repeat. Yes, I did. Template is DOM repeat items notes. Okay. Yes, that seems correct, I think. What if I do index here? Uh, so where is, where are my notes? Dom if, okay, so this is our 
Where's our, uh, no, this is the other thing. Wait a second, where's my add node homepage? Some repeat nodes, yeah, okay, so this should, it should, it looks like it should render, right? So here are your, oh, wait a second. We are, wait, 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 wait. Home components, uh, hey Andres, welcome to the stream. So what is going on? Where's my, so we got the create node thing, but that's it, where's the rest? Okay, so this is our add node, but there's nothing else. I um, uh, I am so confused right now. Okay, so what if, if I move, let's see, so go this goes here, this removes, this goes here, this is adjusted, reloads, this is our shadow roots, there's our header, there's our home components, add node, and we do not, why is it not rendering the rest? I am, um, okay, what? Wait a second, okay, so this is home component, this is defined character, this is node component, this is app, She's defined as app root, okay. Uh, right, right, right. This seems fine. Okay, so this actually should be, whoa, 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 whoa. href. This should be just a link, but that shouldn't affect anything actually. So we got the node, we got the home. This is our home. It renders out notes. Is it because of the event listener? Did it just screwed up something? Where is, wait a second, okay. So I am extremely confused right now. So if I remove my add node, it starts, oh, wait a second. Does it not understand the uh, self-closing tag? Is that the problem? Is that why you are like, hey, I don't know how to render that. Yeah, it is, okay. Cool. So this actually works. Uh, we do not need this index anymore. Okay, come on now. I guess I should retain my cache because whatever is like, it's not terrible, right? Okay, uh, or maybe not. No, it's actually fine. Uh, so, right, I killed the, uh, oh God, okay. On, uh, what was it? Note, right? And the new node is what we did. So I think that should start working now. And I think that's basically, oh yeah, we need to render the other node, which means we would have to tweak the, oh, what do you call it? We have to tweak the uh, node route a bit differently. Um, so another, one to three, one to three, create nodes. Okay, so there's a custom event. But uh, where is the node property? Okay, uh, is it so I, I have to give it details basically, right? So it has to be details and this has to be details node. I guess this is what you're telling me, right? I mean, I'm not familiar with the custom event spec. It seems like it's a native uh, class actually. Yeah, there we go, webdn, uh, sorry, mdn, custom events, da da da, Prodis. E yeah, okay, so it has to be in the detail, it was my own screw up here in this case. Why did I refresh it one more time? What is taking so long actually? I mean, I guess it's, okay, uh, dom repeat is taking a lot of time from unpkg for whatever reason. It's just 333 bytes, but it takes 10 seconds to, <laughs> oh my God. That is definitely not efficient. Um, okay, one more, three to one, blah, blah, blah. click and cannot read property note of undefined. Uh, what did I, what did I do wrong? Dispatch events detail. E oh, yeah, I, did I type details? I think yes, I did. Okay, so it's my own fault. And it should be detail notes. There we go. Okay, one more try. I think we are like. 95% there already. So we just need to render the notes and then we're done. But this is not an experience I would want to repeat. <laughs> that was way too damn painful. 
Z, blah, 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 okay, and... Okay, there's our detail. Detail is our note. Right, okay, so this should be it, and... I think that actually fixes everything, right? So I think this is it. Come on now. Hey, it works. Okay, cool. And now once we click on that, uh, right. Okay, so the links are a bit broken right now. So that should be hash. Okay, reload that. Notes and why is there no note ID? Um, Okay, so links are a bit broken right now, but I don't remember, like, why is there, why are they broken? Oh, because it is underscore ID, right? Okay, so there we go, and that should be, that should do it, come on now. Okay, cool, so this actually works, and there's, there's our note page, okay. So this means we have to, the last thing we have to do is tweak our note page and also pass this ID to the note page. And to do that, we need our app here, right? So we get this ID from here. We're gonna say this note ID is ID, right? So we're gonna store it in um, in our state, basically. This note ID. Da, 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 da. Okay, cool. Oh boy. Okay, and then here, note ID is gonna be a note ID. So we're just gonna pass it as a prop, which means we need to receive the prop here. Uh, ba, 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 ba. And how do I do that? That was so we need properties. Shadow DOM declaring properties. There we go. So we want to say static property return. Yeah, okay. So you can basically define the properties in a static manner. And it's literally just notes ID is going to be a string. Okay. And then I think I should be able to just do that, right? So if I do this and then we reload, we should see the ne no, okay. How do I access them? Uh, blah, 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 property name. So how do I, this user, how do I access it in a template? And I get properties, yeah, okay. I mean, we are using the node component, right? And then notes. Okay, let me just do that. Notes page. Yes, okay, so this is the right component. Note ID, we defined that. So why is it not note ID? No, oh, <laughs> this is probably why, right? No, that's actually not a thing anyway. Okay, let's see if the note ID actually gets assigned. Yes, it does. Okay, so the note ID is assigned. It's for whatever reason is not passed to the child component. Okay. Uh, mode type string, type data, object, type string. Okay. Default. Okay, so you can assign default value in a constructor. Let's try, I mean, is it required? Constructor, super, this note ID. Okay, empty. Just gonna fix it. No, no, it is not, right? So it's still empty. What am I missing? Maybe it should be a dash. You think so? Notify true, read only properties. Blah, 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 load it. Oh, uh, okay. I like this, the whole syntax with. 25 different braces is confusing as hell, to be honest. No, that is not correct. Can I, is that like, I am like, no, this should be right, right? And then this also should be, whoa, whoops. So if I say like default ID here, that should work, right? So we should see the default ID now. Yes, okay, so, so basically it doesn't get passed in for whatever reason. And there's no examples on how to pass that because of course there are none. Uh, users caught, okay, so this is how you pass the value. Which, um, I mean, I guess it's, yeah, may maybe it lower cases then maybe you are right. 
but it sh shouldn't because they use the uppercase here. Oh, okay. So, oh my God, why? So you can define a property with camel case in static properties, but then when you pass it, instead of camel case, you should use kebab case, which why? Okay. So this should pass it. Yeah, okay, there we go. That actually works, but holy shit. Who thought that was a good idea? Why is this a decision? What? Oh my God, okay. Right, uh, okay, there we go. There's our note page. Okay, so add note is something we implemented. So we literally have one more thing to do, which is this one. And this is our, yeah, so we need this query here. Uh, we need the request and then finally we need that uh, notes here so we need to load that note okay how do you so one thing I mean I guess ready would be okay so this notes ID da -da -da, we do that this note one yes okay and then, uh, so let me just do this. I'm just basically gonna render it as a string. So we can actually see that it loads it correctly and renders it, right? I think that should do it. Yes, it does. Okay, cool. So that actually works as expected. Thank God something works as expected. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, right. We just need to render it basically and we are done here. So yeah, okay, okay, okay. So app notes, if there is, all right, you cannot just do that. You have to do the whole, yeah, not exactly amazing dev experience. I, again, you know, there's partially it is because there's no like auto suggestions or anything like that because we are loading everything from content delivery network. On the other hand, some of those patterns are just like, why? Why is this a thing? Okay, uh, can I just do that or do I have to define a helper function for this? Okay. Yes, and then if it is not undefined. Uh, yeah, I haven't actually checked if that works after fixing the, the whole thing with the imports. But no, that's, that's, yeah, that's definitely an experience I would not want to repeat anytime soon. And Stencil looks like a very nice framework right now. Okay, uh, so we need to say node name, node body. Okay, we do not need to print this ID now. There we go. Okay, I think that should work uh, if it understands those conditions and it doesn't. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Uh, is note defines note return notes okay undefined right so oh boy yeah that is it's a really really weird dev experience in 2020 is no notes let's call it this way or notes yes it's like, I'm guessing I cannot even use this exclamation mark there. Why is it stop rendering anything? It does load the data. I imported the DOM if. What's going on now? I uh, know. Uh, okay, so we actually don't need that. Why is it not rendering anything anymore? Because, no, that shouldn't matter, right? No, that should be dynamic because the node is dynamic. Oh God, you can't even do conditional rendering in a simple manner here. Uh, okay, oh yeah, right. That's not gonna work because I'm stringifying it. So it's one thing. So it doesn't render loading for some reason. I guess undefined. 
Oh, right, because right because it's not actually undefined. That is why it's... Okay, so it was my own fault. No, it still doesn't render loading. Um, okay, so what if I... Wait a second. I'm, I'm really curious. Does it render loading? Because I don't think it does. Yeah, it doesn't render loading. No notes. Oh, no, yes, this is correct, right? Um, uh, you know what? It's fine, whatever. We don't, it's not like we have to ren render loading state anyway. <laughs> I honestly don't have any power left to fight with this. But it does load the data and it actually does render the, um, oh god, it removes the request again. There you go. Okay, so now we can actually... Uh... Sorry, what now? Why is that the same note every time? Oh, you are absolutely right. There is... Oh, note ID, yes. So this, this note... But it should be undefined anyway, right? I think. Do you think that's why... So basically, if it's not initialized at all... It's just not gonna do anything? That's even more weird. Well, let's try. So I've initialized it. Is that. No, it still doesn't render anything. But on dynamic navigation, it actually does. Oh, because the ready is triggered only once. So we need a different lifecycle method. Uh, initializing it didn't help. I honestly don't know why that is a problem. Uh, yeah, let's try defines. Is that gonna work? Nope, <laughs> does work. Okay, so we need to figure out the life cycle method. Uh, custom element concepts. We need the life cycle. Where was the life cycle yes and connected maybe connected there we go so now the only problem is that I basically should re-render correctly on page change and this is not the correct method attribute oh yeah attribute change callback that should work right so because we are passing the note as a different attribute. Nope. That does not work. How is there no like render callback or whatever? A connected callback ready. Dom templating. Uh, after, oh, 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 you have helper. Oh. Okay, yeah, sure, why not? Let's use a weird helper function in constructor because apparently that's how it works. Okay, so we got this render status thing. That it, why is it not a lifecycle method? That is weird. Okay, so we got this on PKG. And now here we call this after next render. And then it's this, and then it does a callback. And then in this callback, it should do... This is such a weird API. Okay, so this stuff. Are we working now? Uh, unexpected reserved word. Where exactly? Undefined this... Uh, oh, did I not close something? No, that seems fine, right? So what is... What are you not happy about? Super... 28 node. Oh, right. Uh, supposed to be a sync. That's true. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Test node that loads. No, that still doesn't. After next. Okay. What are the, what other tools does it provide? Because after next render seems to only trigger once. Render. Before. After render queue, export flush, before next render. Exports, okay. 
Here's a callback which will be run before the next render. Uh, after so it's only once. Uh, callback which will be run after the next render. According to the set timeout after the request animation callback, this method is useful for tuning the first render. Uh, apologies, I have to open the door. Let me just nudge someone to open the door. I'll be back in a second. Um, okay, there we go. Anyway, so this is only run once. So does that mean you have to like do it? Wait a second. So do I have to do this in, no, the ready? This is conf like, how the hell? Is it on ready? Super ready. So if I queue it over here, will it do it on every callback? No. I have no idea how to refresh the data here. Okay, let's see. So what is the defer non critical work? That's not what I need. I need to update stuff on every render. Uh, sharing code using mix ins. Oh God, it has mix ins. Uh, get observers. Okay. Attribute change when any of the elements attributes are changed. Okay, so this seems like the attribute change should be exactly what we want, right? So here's the question. Um, kill that. I remove this for now. Okay. Console log attribute change. This. Okay. Like it feels like the attribute change is exactly what we want. But it doesn't seem to trigger it all, even though we pass it different attributes. I guess I guess the attributes are not properties, is what uh used to handle attribute changes. So is attributes properties or is it something different? Your element is rendered once on a page, then via router you change the parameter. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I thought attribute change was the parameter change, but I guess it's not. So attributes are different from pra Oh, my head. Uh, okay, uh, declare properties. Then you observe properties. Uh, that's a different question. So like connected callback, configuring, deserializer. I mean, I guess I could configure deserializer, but that feels like a hacky way of doing it. It's just like terrible. Property change notification events. So I guess I could do this and say read only notify true, right? Which means that. Uh, okay, so there's our. No, wait, that's not here. It's in, in here. So I can say that this is type string read only true notify. And how do I response handler response this set response? Uh, when property produces data, it never consumes data. Read only set property convention. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, you got to reflect property to attribute. <laughs> so properties and attributes are indeed different. And you have to do this for property to be updated, I guess, to attribute automatically. Is that what happens? Okay. And then now I guess this um, attribute callback will start triggering. Holy shit. Okay. This is not like, why is uh, <laughs> Okay. I have a lot of questions about that. Okay, uh, anyway, I think now it should find, no, okay, request, oh, okay, okay, request is not defined again. Please, VS Code, stop deleting stuff, I need it. Okay, another test node, there we go, yes, okay, it, it actually worked. <laughs> Finally, almost two hours later, we defeated the web components and poly, that, no, no, you know what? I mean, I will obviously commit all of that. Um, so we no longer need the old source. It looks like shit, but I honestly don't have any energy left to actually update it. Rewrite to use ES modules and Polymer. But yeah, that was, um, I guess that was an experience that basically tells me to never ever use 
polymer. Uh, yes, it does show the old node because it basically, I guess the old state persists, but I honestly, I don't have energy to like clean up or do the rendering states or whatever. Just screw this. No, 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 no. I like, okay. The web components are not as bad as they were like four or five years ago when I tried it, but they are still in the place where I just don't want to touch them. And I don't really see the reason to pick them over react or but literally anything else, to be honest, like even stencil was a like miles better experience than this. And it allows you to opt out of shadow dome, which is also kind of cool. Yeah, if you build more than website, one website using it, this could be better next time. Yes and no, because like, how would you like, I mean, this it's just not a nice experience. Like overall, I, I don't, I didn't enjoy it at all. Like this was not, it's not something I would want to do on a daily basis, basically, you know, writing React, writing Vue, writing even Angular. It's, it's nice, it's comfortable, there's tooling around it. There's like a cool, a lot of cool, fun stuff. And this is just painful. Okay, let me update the readme. Like if you guys have any questions or suggestions or things you want to ask me about this painful experience, do feel free to try the bleh. Throw them into the chat right now uh, while I'm updating it. Um, polymer. Uh, so ES modules, polymer. And web components for basic blah blah blah. They're gonna get used with uh, ES modules. Da da da. Vanilla JS web app with web components. Probably should stick to one way to capitalize this. What was the um, URL for it? It should be in the Discord, right? Oh boy, yeah. Okay, let's not do this again, please. I. That's enough of web components for me for 2020. Um, no, ES modules and HTML imports are two different things. So HTML imports is for web components and ES modules is for JavaScript. Although you can import uh, web components via ES modules if they are purely defined in JavaScript. Okay, showing how to build a simple notes app using ES modules, uh, Polymer and web components. Okay, um, yes, modules, I guess would be fair to reference them here. So I guess MDN, does MDN has a good article on that? Probably does. Uh, cartoon deep dive, and eh, that's not exactly what I want. I want the spec or something, exploring yes modules. Okay, MDN, I know what I'm looking for. There we go, JavaScript modules, okay. Um, that's fine. Okay, cool. So that is okay. Right. I also see, yeah, it seems like I'm not going to be using yarn anymore as well. <clears throat> Apologies because it's just easier to use new NPM because it's like 10 times faster. Okay. Um, so update the readme. <clears throat> um, all right. Update readme. Okay. Git push minus your origin uh, vanilla. I mean, vanilla JS can be a very nice ex experience, especially with the S modules when you can just, you know, um, import everything from wherever you want, but web components are not absolutely like this was yikes. No, 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 no. Okay. So we did that. We got another branch here. Uh, I guess I should update the read me with links to two different branches. Okay, let me think. So I don't actually need a whole ton of this stuff. I can kill all of the folders, node modules, schema. So I actually don't need anything but read me in, in this case, right? So I can get li okay, license can stay. That's fine. Package, package JSON. Pencil TS config. Okay, editor config. Uh, prettier. Okay, uh, so this kill all the files. Just trying out web components for basic building simple graph app, base node apps with various web component 
technologies. And then I just basically link it to stencil, polymer and vanilla versions, right? And then just link to the corresponding um, branches and I think we are good. Okay, cool. See, okay, a link to corresponding branches with um, projects from master. Okay. It's, uh, let me see. What about lit HTML did you try before? I mean, I've seen it. So it seems like lit HTML is very, very lightweight and it only does so much. Uh, it's like, I, I'm, let, let's have a look. I'm curious. So basically, lit html the problem uh, so what we need is two-way data bindings reaction to property changes and um event dispatching right so this was the three things okay let's see writing templates so this is yeah so the templating looked fine so i mean we use the lit html inside the polymer so polymer relies on it so when he did that basically uh, okay, so you can just use functions to render stuff. Can you use other components that are nested? That's the question number one. Okay, it has different, completely different syntax for event bindings because of course it does, even though it's the library from the same team. I don't know how that works. Okay, so the, yeah, render the nested components in the same way, that seems okay. Conditionals are easier. Okay, that's a good start. I don't know why they opted in for doing conditionals the way they did. Okay, so you can just use JavaScript to render arrays, which is also nicer. Uh, rendering templates, template syntax. So it doesn't seem like it handles, so like this looks very, there's a very nice rendering way, right? But it doesn't handle everything else, such as the local state, the events, properties, and so on and so forth, which would mean we have to write a framework around, right? So as a rendering mechanism, it seems very nice. But yeah, it's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> the whole ecosystem feels like a bit of a mess. HTML import is to import component from HTML. Yes, modules is to import components from JS. Yes, pretty much this is like the gist of it. Uh, I don't I don't even know if HTML imports are, does anyone still use them? Like they, they exist basically, but they are obsolete. So HTML imports is obsolete right now. And I guess nobody uses them anymore. There's your answer. So it's like, it's an uh, outdated thing and uh, lit element uses HTML imports. Are you sure? That doesn't sound right. I mean, the lit element is built upon the web component spec, so it shouldn't actually use. Um, okay, I did that, I push, I did push it to master, right? No, I didn't, okay. Okay, cool, now I did. Um, so lit element should build upon the web components specs, which is the templates and uh, shadow DOM and custom elements and all that other stuff, right? So it shouldn't use HTML imports. Uh, lit HTML, blah, blah, blah. Da, da, da. So it uses da, 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 lit element. Where did you find that it uses uh, HTML imports? Because I don't... It seems like it's all pure JavaScript and it basically uses lit, lit HTML for rendering. Does have events that we are talking about. Yeah, lit element has those events, but like lit element is basically the same as polymer element. So it's like, you know, there's not too much difference. And again, not a fan of the documentation and API they have. So it's like eh, eh. a bit painful, just, just, just a tiny bit. Uh, beta launch scheduled for next Wednesday. Uh, I'm assuming, uh, so, uh, Carlos, you're talking about your own products. Well, then good luck with building that because launches are always tough. <laughs> okay, so uh, we should have now a readme that points to the other versions. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yep. Yeah, that's basically it for my side. So that was extremely painful two hours. Oh, Remix, yes. Oh man, I am very excited about that. I'm definitely gonna do a stream on Remix. 
this is one of the few React, like upcoming React libraries that are really, really exciting because so far all the previews they've shown and I follow the, uh, I think pretty much the whole team on Twitter were really awesome. Like this is gonna be very cool. So yes, we are definitely gonna have a Remix stream at one point and uh, hopefully the experience is gonna be a lot nicer. <laughs> we can see that on your face. <laughs> all right then. <laughs> Okay, um, any more questions, suggestions, or things you want to discuss, guys? If not, we can just uh, wrap it up here and then uh, basically, yeah, continue on uh, Saturday with BHS Weekly and next Wednesday, hopefully, with Remix. Uh, and we're going to see how that goes. I'll give you a couple of seconds to decide. As usual, you can find the whole source code on GitHub. You can join our Discord server if you have any other questions and didn't get a chance to ask them now or wanted to ask them anyway or need some help. And uh, yeah, that's basically it from my side. Doesn't seem like we have any more questions or suggestions. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed watching me suffer all this time. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you on Saturday for BXJS Weekly.